Welcome everybody to the watch list, your virtual weekly TV guide right here on the Latin Nurse Network. We're ready to talk about all the shows that get released on streaming, give you our best recommendations for the week. And at the end of the show, let you know what's coming out so you too can create your very own watch list. Joining me as always is the Senor Jaime, aka Chewy. What it is, what it was, what it shall be. What's up, brother? What's going on? Good. Uh, you know, nice easy week of TV this week, last couple weeks. Nothing uh, spectacular. It's no, no, nothing. I'm waiting for the, the good stuff's coming out at the end of the month, next two weeks. Yeah, next few weeks is it's pretty busy, pretty packed with some big stuff. Uh, I think the last couple weeks, some big shows and looking forward. They dropped a trailer for Warrior Season 3, which looks <laughs> awesome. Uh, <laughs> such a good show. I'll start hyping it and hyping it now because, th- was it two weeks? June 28th, maybe? Is that 29th. Right? 29th. 29th. Is that Friday or Saturday? I think it's Friday. That's an interesting um, max release date. But nonetheless, uh, season three, the first two seasons are fantastic. If you interaction, you like martial arts, fantastic show. It's so good. Start catching up now so you can get ready for season three as a show that you, you and I have recommended it to the high heavens. Um, mm. And I can't wait for that. But the trailer dropped. It looked pretty good. But let's focus on this week and the stick with Max as they released the show. I know you weren't interested in Neither was I. No. Give it a shot because it's Sunday night, and that's usually their prime time slot. That's, uh, that's their slot, right? Um, a little bit late. Should, should be the warrior slot. What are they thinking? Uh, it should be the warrior Good slot. Good lord. There's, there's no disagreeing there, but the show called The Idol, uh, yeah. which was highly, I'll say highly touted with just wrong, poor choice of words. But there was some sort of buzz about the show. Basically, it's uh, about a, a young woman who's a, a pop star. And, you know, she's in a crossover. She doesn't like what she does. She does because she makes money, yada, yada, yada. She meets some guy at a club who's older, I guess, changes the course of her career for better or worse, depending who you ask people around there who kind of help her publicist and agent, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'll say this because, you know, for those who don't have Pornhub or anything like that, for those maybe one person out there, this is a show for you because uh, it's very sexual. Uh almost unnecessary shows all about this sex man bad word but it's a lot of nudity and sex and it's very sex so the show really strives for almost to a detriment because it's really all I, all it has to offer is that and like i said if you want to see that you can get it for free any other way <laughs> anytime you want it's that easy um if you're going to give us that give me a good story give me a good character around that great otherwise it's just point. and again <laughs> right here on the phone oh you can anywhere you want to watch you want to watch, go ahead i get it um but yeah i this is not a good show at all i didn't and for one episode it didn't grab me i have no sense of what the story really is and all that and it should by the first episode which is the, you know when you do a weekly release it has to grab you from the beginning you know what i'm saying true sometimes we get two or three episodes and give you a chance to kind of warm up to the story and that's great this one could use no episodes because it's not I, I, I didn't like it it's a dud and i, I checked because maybe it's me but Apparently has not gotten a good reception everywhere else. They should have put Warrior. That's yeah, all I'm saying. You know, it's just like, yeah, this is, uh, it's just, all I'm yeah, saying. This is gonna be nine weeks of dud or whatever. It just was not. I, I, it wasn't for me. I did not like it. Actually, was, I did give it a chance. I know Chu, you didn't see it, right? I had no interest. Yeah, I get it. No, I, I, I knew that. I just again, it was H. I give HBO a chance, like Apple, right? We give it a shot because they're known for quality, right? Um, more times than not. So that being said, I know it's a show you were very interested in, and I wasn't. Uh, and that is, of course, The Lazarus Project. Not The Idol. <laughs> uh, not The Idol. Um, but watch American Idol, for Christ's sake. Uh, but this one is <laughs> more so, so interesting. Uh, this one here is like a sci-fi uh, show, but time travel, right? Which I love time travel, but I'm very p- picky about it because... Many times it's done shitty. Sometimes it's done great. Sure. Well, the, this like is dark. a very this is a very unique time travel element uh, in the, the introducing this show. Correct. It was on TNT. Was Moni Gripe? I mean, I was like, oh, here TNT saw. It was TNT, but it's not a TNT original production. Let me let me, let me get that straight. This is uh, enough. Uh, was it a BBC or one of these uh, European uh, okay. UK channel originally? Uh, that that. TNT purchase to put on their platform. Oh, okay. So well, that that makes it feel better, particularly after watching the best episode. That makes sense to me because if you pick Idol or this one, right? I would have gone with the Idol just because of the of the district channels or whatever it's mm-hmm. Um So this one here to give you a quick background, we have a, a guy who's uh, trying to create an app uh, designer, or whatever, and he 
has a wife, well, his girlfriend, he ends up getting married with her. It's, it's like six months of his life going through the progress of getting the loan hmm. to start his app, and his wife girlfriend's pregnant. She's and pregnant. Married, yeah. All these great little things happening all the way through Christmas time. It starts in July. Uh, I think it's a, a, during the pandemic, right? Uh, am I wrong in that? What well, was, uh, the, 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 the social it, it, pandemic. It, start, it starts yeah. in, in July 1st, uh, yeah. whatever year. But through the six months as he's progressing through his life, uh, all of a sudden the pandemic arises, right? Yeah. starts with a few people, and then it's obviously <laughs> right. shutdowns, masking, the whole nine yards. But it, it, it gets progressively worse to the point that obviously that you know it, it, the, the deaths are, are are mounting very quickly right and so we see very that COVID obvious, it's not covid yes. but it's very similar to that yes mm -hmm. um yeah so basically well, so it's christmas hits and all that he wakes up the next day and all of a sudden it's back to july 1st kind of a groundhog day to some degree um well, well, Connie. Well, um he's the greatest character in movie history <laughs> but <laughs> So he wakes up, unbeknownst to him, it's back to July 1st, and he's like, what the hell is going on here? And it's starting mm -hmm. to go through the whole thing. It's, you know, people think he's going crazy because he's telling people, I don't know why he's telling people, but he's telling people, hey, I've done this before, what's going on? He discovers there's an organization out there on the Lazarus Project who is aware of what's going on, and they're an organization that almost like Umbrella Academy, uh, even the the one from the Marvel and Loki, Time Variants, there we go, they try to... Mm -hmm. There's a when there's a world ending event, nuclear war, whatever, they use this time thing to kind of fix things and put back things in order. And, yes. And this guy has a, a mutation apparently who realizes what's going on because nobody knows what's going on, right? He, there's yeah. a big loop happening. He mm -hmm. doesn't know what's going on. So he gets recruited to the team and they're off to the race. So uh, great premise. I got I do admit that I wasn't I wasn't sure this was the premise going into it. I was, wasn't unaware of it. So Chewie, I'll let you go first since this is the one you're looking forward to. What do you think about this one? No, man, I, I guess I, this is a definitely a unique take on, on a time, a cake, a, a, a time element. It's not time travel because there is no control. Fair enough. The, the, way, the way they've explained it is you, they can reset to a particular date, right, until they, they're able to fix it. Or, or they don't fix it and, and, and the world continues in that timeline, right? But if, if there's some sort of world ending calamity, they can go back to a, a particular date previously to try to fix it. That's mm -hmm. what the celebration does to prevent these events. So that's very unique. But and and the rules are obviously you can't use this for, you know, you know, I lost my mom and they go back and save her type of situation. This is only for, you know, world ending calamities and that's it. That's the rule. And and because of these rules, you know, we've come to find out there's individuals that have been part of this organization that have strayed the path. And are trying to set right what what's went wrong in their lives, right? And so right. this is where the, this is where the conflict arises from, right? Balancing, you know, what the purpose of this project is to their own personal self interest, right? And we see this at the end with the main character, where a, a, as 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 his life is changed in this new new iteration, right? There was a moment where he saved his wife right, from a major accident. Um, and then when they reset, you know, they break, they call him, they take, take that, they call him because they, they were able to track someone down. And in that moment, he, I guess he didn't realize what he had done previously in his previous six months. And she actually gets hit almost probably almost killed because really. she gets hit by a Mack truck or something. Mm -hmm. And so you start, you start seeing in his head, you know, you know, we, so you start seeing the gears turning, you know, of, of wanting to go back and save her, even though that's not the, the purpose of this, of this project. Um, they don't, they don't get, <laughs> they did something very, very unique, right? They, you know, and, and maybe, maybe it's important that people who like to dissect the science behind all this oh, and the possibilities. I, exactly. I was going to bring and, that and, up. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and so he's, he asked the question, how does this work? And she goes, you know, uh, 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 what, what was it? Uh, so she threw out some physical, uh, uh cool. physics term. Quantum, quantum physics. Quantum physics. And he's like, no, he's like, well, I'm not going to waste my time telling you to extend this to you. And they move on. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, they, they offer no explanation. Yeah, it's a great little <laughs> which, which is fine. Yes, yes. I mean, that's it. yeah. I mean, okay, <laughs> yeah. It's great because well, because you know, if you can't explain it, which I, I get, don't even attempt it. Just don't even try. Just, just yeah. say this is what it's, it is. It's above your Take head. Take it on faith. Right. Take it on faith. Yeah. It happened. This guy's blue. <laughs> Why? Don't worry about it. Just, it's don't worry about it. It is. And, and that's, the, that's the, the take on it, which I, I, I respect it. I get it. Yes. Uh, yes. Particularly, if, particularly if you're a writer and don't know how to explain it, just know what happens. Mm -hmm. One line, one line of dialogue. Uh, you, you never, if I told you, you're not going to extend it. All right, great. Moving on. And, and but also, you don't box yourself in by tying yourself to those right. rules. It's exactly. Which a lot of shows mm -hmm. make make mistake where they where they explain something, 
And then as the show progresses, they end up having to break their own rules because it's just no way around yeah, you, the writing you, the story. You, so this way, yeah, you box yourself in a certain mm. sort of guidelines, and it's like okay, you're forced to break them. And when that happens, which happens a lot, these time shows, how you want to call them, fall, tend to fall apart. They tend to yes. suffer. So, but listen, I like this only one episode that dropped in TNT. I liked it. It was good. Um, surprisingly, uh, you know, this can go wrong in many a ways. So I'm very tread carefully as to keep watching but it was a good episode it set up the premise very well very interesting a, di a different kind of take on I i'll keep saying time travel i know it's not in theory the exact same thing but mm -hmm. you know sort of um yeah. i enjoyed it i like that I'm, i recommend the show absolutely i think it's very interesting i think it's, it has a lot to offer a lot of potential mm, excellent yeah. this can go really bad very very quickly so i'll keep a close eye on this one but we'll, we'll probably talk about when it ends to see how i assume it's 10 episodes or something i, I don't know I, I think it's eight for the eight. eight. Okay, so TNT uh, drops every Sunday on that one. So, but yeah, a surprising Sunday. show as well. Uh, I think probably one of the better shows this uh, this week. Uh, Much better than the Idol from when I got Way it. a thousand <laughs> times better. This is actually interesting. So, but it, it is what it is. Uh, the next one we'll spend too much time on, but it is worth mentioning because the show you and I have been championing for a while, and that's never have I ever on Netflix. Little quick 25, 30 minute easy watch comedy, uh, uh, coming of age, young girl, Indian girl who. Is incredibly talented, incredibly smart. Going to go to Princeton. That's her goal. Her father dies in the first. Well, I think the first season's already dead, uh, yeah. or recently dead. And she's dealing with that, you know, issue with the father who she was very close to, and you know, couple that with, or compound that with, you know, going to high school and relationships, sex, and all the usual stuff that you deal with at the teenage years while she's trying to maintain that her excellence, right? Uh, very funny show, and I never really got to YA, and it easily could have, right? Uh, John Macro narr narrates it, we, and he's he's. So good on the show, uh, you know. We're watching Mac and Rose, so I get it. Um, but it's so well done. It's his final season. I'm about halfway through, and it's again. If you haven't watched it, you probably want to start watching it. But I do recommend. It's a big recommend for me. And it's, this fourth season has been on par with the other ones. It's very consistent. I just show you if, again. It's a short show, thirty minutes. It's easy watch, good comedy. It's done well for Netflix. This is one I definitely recommend. Chew. What were your thoughts on the final season thus far? No man, like you said, this all has to do is be fun. And, and gives us it gives us funny in space, man. I mean, you know, it's different from Ted Lasso. Where Ted Lasso would give yep. you funny, but give you a lot, a lot of heart, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and it was designed to want want the relationship. This is this one has some heart, but but it's re it obviously relies on the comedy. It, it, it does have the heart, comedy. right? Of course, it does. Have yeah, the heart. it has a heart, but yeah. this is really it's really just a straight comedy, mm -hmm. right? Where, where you enjoy the characters, you, you laugh at the moments, you can relate to that to their their ups and downs in their lives and, and the conflicts that arise and, and within their friendships and their relationship. And it's a, it's a good watch, man. It's a lot of fun. And John Macro makes a show, man. I mean, he well, is great. A, his an A plus yeah. great narrator. I mean, without it, it's not, it's not as, it's, I don't oh. know if it's even really as funny without him narrating oh, no, this agree. show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. he, he brings, he brings the comedy or sets up the comedy because he, he he acts as us as as what he's throwing his opinions. I mean, he's not written, but mm -hmm. his thoughts, and that's the thoughts that we would have with you know if we were going through these situations. Like it's like, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, and he he throws in his autobiography and stuff in a couple of episodes. It's just it's just hilarious, man. Yeah, it's so well done. But I absolutely recommend. So I'm looking forward to finishing this one. A bit of sweet as as it's going to mm -hmm. be. Uh, this next one, based on a true story. Uh, that's the name of the title. Not this show is based on a true story. Uh, the new dark comedy on Peacock, Peacock? starring uh, Kylie Cuco and I think Chris Messina. Yes, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so they're you know a couple going through some financial issues. She's a struggling real estate agent, and he's a former tennis <laughs> pro who beats Federer when he and his yeah, when he was, was younger. That was a, that was a highlight of his. That was his yeah. four touchdown high school moment. That, that was his Al Bundy <laughs> moment. His four yeah. touchdowns at Pokai. <laughs> He, you know, towards ACL. Now, you know, he's just, you know, teaching tennis at a high, you know, tennis club and all that. Cool. The, the struggling, and you know, she's a, she's huge into the crime, mystery, murder podcast, and all of those stuff. And lo and behold, I guess they discover that a plumber, someone they met recently, happens to be a serial killer. So cool. instead of doing the thing everyone else would do and turn him in, they decide to recruit him to create a, co a podcast about him from his perspective, interviewing him and why he does what he does. And hopefully to make gain money. That's the premise of the show. Um, interesting premise. Very kind of murders, murders in the building. Only murders in the building, kind of, for the podcast and the murder, to some degree. Um, 
But well, without, the, without, the, without the mystery. No, oh, right, right. It's not, <laughs> exactly. It's not that stuff. But, you know, it's just the whole podcast and stuff like that. Uh, Chew, your thoughts on, on this one? Yeah, I, I don't know what to expect from this show. Um, and I, I think I'm enjoying it. <laughs> wait, 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 yeah, I'm enjoying it <laughs> for whatever reason. Um, I mean, it, it's a short. It's, 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 it's probably <laughs> better than some of the Peacock shows they've seen, like The Last Resort. Or some of the other ones, we try to play on the mystery element. Mm-hmm. This this as this has a little bit more comedy. It's a little bit more. There's a lot more levity, and, and, and it's obviously a, a little unusual, right? You have a couple couple of approaches, a serial killer. God knows what could happen to try to convince them to do a podcast so they can make some. <laughs> we like ridiculous premise, but 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 interesting enough because it, it, there, there's enough there to, to keep you entertained. Uh, and that's what I love looking was looking for from the show for thirty minutes and keep me entertained, you know, make it interesting and, and don't be like every other show we see on TV. Uh, I'm I'm torn on this one to be honest with you. I I like the premise a lot. It's ridiculous, right? It, and that's fine. I don't mind. I mean, who what couple approaches to your kid to do? I mean, come on. And just even the morality issues alone, right? And, yes, exactly. <laughs> The, all that aside, because I get it, right? That makes total sense. And, 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 the, and the, the, the one they show killing off is with some, uh, the girl from Stranger Things. Stranger Things, right. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, I was like, that? I was like, oh, uh, she, she, she's eating again. Good for her. Cool. But um, <laughs> as ridiculous as the premise is, it, it should have just continued to be ridiculous, right? And really make a nice, this farcical show, right? And still be kind of satirical at the same time. It's just, again, comedy, right? That's, that's what they're the building the show as. I just wasn't laughing. You know, I get it, and I saw the intention there, but they should have gone the extra mile. With a ridiculous premise, you got to keep things ridiculous. You really do, I think, personally. Um, again, this is, I mentioned only murders in the building. This is not that. <laughs> Obviously, right? Uh, that show is funny as hell. Um, it's okay. I'll leave that. Like I said, I, don't, I didn't hate it. I just thought it just didn't reach the heights. A show like this probably should have, and... I'm a miss on it. I, I, I honestly wouldn't recommend it uh, for me. Uh, but again, I I think you are recommending it, Chewy. I mean, I mean, I'm enjoying it. It's a, it's a Mario. No, it's just, it's, I, I get it. There's, there's like I said, we're, we're there. split. Yeah. You know, like yeah, it, there's good it, moments it, there. Like it's they, not. Yeah. It's not. Never have I ever comedy. It's not. It's no. very dark because the, I mean, yeah. you did it with the serial killer and murder. Oh, right. And those literally right off the there. first five minutes, you see you see a murder. Yeah. And, 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 it's, and it's graphic, yeah. It's not like yeah, you know, it's very graphic. Oh, yeah. There's just one scene yes. I you saw which someone falls off the building. I'll leave it at that. And I'm gonna spoil not it. Not yet. Not yet. I'm okay. Two which or three, is, three in. Yeah. yeah, I was like, whoa, like wow. <laughs> Talk about graphic. Um, yes. You know, but yeah, I just I don't know. I just I just didn't grab me. I'll keep watching it because there is some mild entertainment. And I like the idea. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I kind of it's enough that I want to see where this goes. Right. Um, but it's not a high recommendation. But you're right. It's one of the better peacock shows, I guess. But again, what does that mm-hmm. really say? Because Peacock's not exactly the, uh, be- the uh, beacon yeah, of, of great TV, you know. Well, no, I mean, Bel Air is probably their, their best show uh, to date. They have <laughs> they have some good documentaries. I give them that. No, they, um, they got some, they've some, had some decent uh, shows, you know. Yeah. Whatever. I'm gonna go on resume. I mean, look, Peacock, look, but, look, they, gave us the, they gave us the Bayside reboot, which was just terrible, but it was still, you know. Yeah, I mean, if, yeah. If you're not, out, if, yeah, if you're not out, say yeah. a Bell fan, that wouldn't work. But Bel Air, no, Bel Air, I like Bel Air. That was good. That stuff, but this, great, yeah, this is this is fine. I guess it's fine. Like I said, but I'm not raging about it. It's just a little disappointing. And but it is what it is. Um, this next one, Chewy, I know you haven't watched, and I was not aware of the show. I had it on my list, and I just totally forgot about it. Uh, so, maybe I did. <laughs> um, maybe, but it's a, a Korean show. Uh, then no, <laughs> that's what the South Korean show. Let me rephrase. Uh, we support North Korea in the show. Uh, South Korean show. Just for the record, we we'll get canceled because we support Kim Jong Il. Whoever's taking over. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, it's called Bloodhounds. Um, it, and you know, I, I like the K drama stuff a lot. You know, plus you have some action. I'm all I'm down for that. Right, we talking about war. You know, like coming up. But this one here, uh, you have a, a boxer, super nice kid. He's boxing. He's great boxer just end up winning a tournament you know trying to help his mom out was struggling with money the person who he beats in the title fight or i guess the, the championship uh, fight um end up becoming friends after the fight the mutual respect and he's quite the opposite but they're both in marines but he's more uh more an extrovert and i guess more of an introvert end up being friends the mom who you know had issues with the money she borrows money from a company which is going around all these small businesses in the area and kind of uh, conning them to sign these great loans, right? Very low interest, but then if they don't pay 10% within the first week, all of a sudden, the interest goes from 5% to 
you know, so the bamboozing everybody because they don't want anybody to pay because they want to take over the whole neighborhood, essentially. Mm-hmm. He finds out, you know, he, he, he tries to confront him. Things go bad, whatever. Now he has to find a job. Him and his friend, help, friends really helping him out. They get a job, you know, as bodyguards uh, because of the background. And they end up um, in the middle of uh, this loan sharking uh, scams going around the city, all tied into the company who's trying to scam everybody. And so he has a chance to kind of, you know, infiltrate and find out what's going on, right? Uh, bring justice, if you will. Um, this one here is actually very good. I was really surprised uh, how good it was. I'm, I'm about four in. The last episode is on point. Um, it's the first one we really to get some really great action on this show. This really was shot, really well done. Because this guy's a boxer, right? So the techniques you use not the same as a regular, you know, action kung fu kind of film, right? Martial arts like you've seen in Warrior. Um, so the movements are very interesting. And he kind of almost lunging from knee knee punching at the same time it's really fascinating how they do it especially in that first we have seen the first episode is really cool so it's really well the kids are great characters they got a little bromance going so it's kind of funny it takes a little bit to, to get going but once it gets going yeah it's very good i like what the story what's going on it's not perfect but it's a f- good fun entertaining show one of the better uh you know as far as south korean shows that doesn't involve something fantastical you know because that's i think sometimes that that's when it gets up into trouble very good. High recommend for me. Very surprised on this. So we want some, some good, interesting action, a good story. Well done. I, I'm surprised that this was one of the probably my, my, one of the better shows that I've seen this week, and I didn't think that was going to happen. I gave it a shot, and I'm glad I did. High recommend. Get Bloodhounds on Netflix. Eight episodes, about an hour a piece. Um, this last one, Apple Plus. Uh, good old Apple Plus. We always get Apple Plus a chance. That is the crowded room. Uh, this is a a prequel to Spider-Man: uh, Homecoming. Of course, we got a. <laughs> this takes place in the seventies with Tom Holland, of course, everyone's uh, you know f- current Spider-Man. Um, you know he plays a disturbed, troubled kid. You know, troubled home who ends up, you know, living in one of his and well, a recently neighbor house, I guess. We just some guy moved in, some guy mystery mysterious guy, and he moves in. He's having problems with his parents, and there's another girl living there who's got even more issues than he does. And you know, he begins the show to show him where they're trying to kill somebody. He's trying to kill somebody for her doesn't do it she ends up shooting around in the middle of uh, i think by uh, rated music city hall uh he gets arrested for it the girl's gone missing the guy who's he lived with the uh, the landlord i guess is missing a people are missing a psychiatrist comes in by amanda siegfried who's trying to figure out how who and why essentially right uh and he's kind of retelling his story and how he got to that point in the beginning um true your thoughts on this one um i'm not sure yet it's really slow and maybe too slow to its detriment. Sure. I mean, I got three episodes and it still hasn't, this the story still hasn't enough, um, a dance board enough for me to keep me wanting to see do I want to continue watching this or not. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying that's a good thing, right? Because it's going to turn people off after a couple episodes. It's like, okay, where are we going? I don't know yet. All right, I'm out. So I'm still out on this one. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I like Tom Holland. I think he's miscast here. I, it's hard to take him serious because he's just so, I see, see Spider-Man and that's on me, right? Just all I see. And, and but I see him do other things of more serious nature and it just, he just looks so innocent. He's got no edge to him. And that's a problem with a show who's dealing with mental issues or whatever, they're, they're mental health, whatever the show is trying to, you know, talk about. And you're right, it's just he's going through his backstory and what happened with his parents and his friends and he's, you know, selling drugs and yeah, yeah. This is all could have been done in one episode, right? They could have cycled through lives in one episode. I mean, for the they, most, for they, the most I mean, part. Ultimately, there's a spectrum of being a, a serial killer or, or, or they don't know, they're trying to investigate. There's a bunch of people missing. Right. But yeah, he just, just, just comes off as too, I don't know, too safe. That's what I'm saying. Too innocent. It, it's just... Something yeah. is, is off. It's, it's, it's really off. It really is. It's, again, it's very slow. And and they gave you three episodes. This is one episode I died. I would have gone back and watched the other ones, to be honest with you. But particularly at the second one. The third one, we may finally got to the part where the beginning of the show was. But there's obviously more to it because there's ten episodes and, you know, there's more going on than, than we know about, right? They kind of hint at mm-hmm. it. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I want to go back and watch it. I, I may yeah. finish it. But that being said... I can't recommend the show. <laughs> Ultimately, you know, there's, uh, there's much better things on Apple Plus than this show, by far. Uh, we talked about Ted Lasso to death, you know, Slow Horses, uh, oh, uh, Silo, which is a great show going on right now. I'm getting yeah, a lot of, a lot of yeah. play. We'll talk about that in a couple weeks when it ends. Um, 
<coughs> excuse me uh, but yes yeah, it's, it's just too much going on and, and and for me it's not a recommend chewy i don't know if you recommend the show or not i i i, I don't think i can i it's just no. um no. yeah i mean like i you know lazarus was way better and hell i'd rather watch based on the true story than than more of oh, no, the, I, to be honest I, I, think, I, mean, just, I think every show aside from from idol watching this show it, it's, 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 it's at the bottom of the pile. It really is. And that, that's not, that's, again, we, we talked about four, three or four shows you could watch instead of this. Yeah, at the end of the day. So I, I can recommend it. It's kind of a miss on an Apple Plus's part. And they got other yeah. stuff coming out, which I'm excited about. This ain't one of them. And yeah, I probably, yeah, don't watch it. We're wasting time. Uh, but that being said, uh, there's other stuff that's coming out that hopefully are better than the Crowded Room. <laughs> God, I hope so. Uh, so let's talk at least better than Idol. So let's talk about those uh, those coming out next week here. Uh, a few things here and there. Netflix, uh, a little documentary, uh, Our Planet Part 2. You know, the, you know the, na- the nature, you know, uh, documentary yeah, and all that. Very cool, very well done. Netflix does them well, so I'm done. I like these shows. Uh, that comes out on the 14th. Uh, same day also is The Full Monty, which I was not aware was coming out. This is, of course... Uh, series with the same characters of, from the movie from 1997 or 98? 98. 98, yeah. Okay, but uh, yeah. guys who are uh, strippers, come with <m- unlike Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's a struggling town. <laughs> right, right. Right, and they end up thinking, okay, well, you know, how, how can they try, try to make anything? And so these are just normal, everyday guys. These yeah, are, these are chip and dope yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. And, and so they end up making a, a stripper show to try to make money. And so that was the premise of the movie. Very this good. Is, yeah. This is a continuation of that story. So 20, what a, almost 30 yeah, years yeah, later. 26 years, um, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah so whatever I'm, it is. I'm curious. I like the movie a lot. It's a very, mm-hmm. a very it's actually a surprise, surprising hit back in the day. No one expected mm-hmm. anything out of the show, so out of the film. So I'm looking forward to that. Again, that's from FX slash Hulu. Uh, on the 15th, I think it's Thursday, is Netflix bringing out its, of course, long-running sixth season of Black Mirror's anthology series. I've been a big fan, you know, with anthology, there's one crap, there's a lot of good here. There's more good than bad as far as Black Mirror is concerned. Uh, very te- technologically themed, you know, you know, holding up a mirror to society, you know, Black Mirror. Uh, looking forward to it. We got Jesse Pinkman in this one. We got uh, Salma Hayek in this one as well. Mm-hmm. So bigger names than usual. Uh, in this season, so looking forward to that. Uh, and then we have two more. One on the 16th is Extraction 2. The sequel to, you guessed it, Extraction 1. Uh, Chris Hensworth, <laughs> Thor. Um, I like the first one. The action was great in the first one. No, no doubt about yeah. the action. It's a straight action movie. Straight, right? Yeah, right. straight action. It was shot really well. The, the choreography, everything was great. The movie itself was, was fine. It was whatever, right? But the action was above and sh- uh, head and shoulders above a lot of things that come out so it made them a, a, a decent film to watch this one was just as nutty i'm looking forward to them big time i would say though on the trailers are interesting this is just so funny it is uh, i guess i had he's trying to hide from a helicopter i don't know <clears throat> helicopter shooting you know at him so he finds a place to hide and he hides behind a ladder <laughs> just think about that i want to get hit by bullets i'm behind a behind a ladder uh, whatever uh <laughs> I'll forgive it if something cool comes out of it. I really don't care. It's an action film. It is what they are. They are what they are. Let's be honest. But that one looks pretty cool. And the last one on Star. I, I never got into this show. No, you have Chewing Us Outlander. Uh, season six? Seven. Seven. Uh, this is the final season of this? Or, or... Uh, I think eight is the final season. I'm, oh. not, I'm still unsure. Of, you know, This is not the final season as far okay. as I understand it. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I never got into it. But you know, it's the last one on Stars. It gets, uh, this is like mm. a period period piece now. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, this has a time travel element <laughs> as well. So it is, I live with a sci fi ish. But yeah, to go back to, to uh, Revolutionary War era, is where, where it is right now, at least, at least in the past. Fair enough. So, yes, uh, if you get into that show, that's dropping its seventh season. That mm-hmm. being said, Chewie, I think we've gone over everything, some decent stuff out there. We'll see you next week. Got a couple things coming out. But as usual, we thank you guys. Subscribe, like, notif- hit the notification bell. Of course. I know. I, I, oh. I finally saw. I finally Sorry. saw uh, Spider Man, by the way. And uh, Spider Verse. Yes, and this man, Phenomenal. amazing. Yeah. Uh, my my, kid, my kids are real fan animators, and they oh, had the true. as soon as as soon as the movie. Well, first he, uh, I listened to your to you and Eric talk about the ending, and they were like, "What?" And don't let me continue. So I was like, "I knew it was coming because I I got yeah. hurt." I listened to your podcast about that. I was like, okay, I know what to, I didn't tell them. So they were there. Yeah, they expect that great disappointment. They was like, what? No. Yeah, but know. second, then they, they, they could not stop talking about every single animation style 
that they saw in the film, which was just as amazing. For yeah, them, it was amazing. Yeah. Never mind the story, the story of it as well. And so that it was just a great movie. Yeah, I hate yeah. to see this to be continued, Jeff. Yeah, I know. But it was like I said, it was my favorite movie of the year for me, mm. hands down. It might be the, my, the best one of the year for me. We'll see. Uh, ho I hope Tony beats it because if it's better than Spider Man, great. Um, I welcome it. But yeah, great movie. And it's funny because we talk about the story on Nurse Planning here on Thursdays. A uh, 14 year old. You know, speaking the, the, yeah, the Lego scene. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, some, some kid uh, was hired after he did a trailer, Lego trailer of a shot by shot of the uh, Spider Verse trailer. And, you know, uh, Lord and Miller, the producers, they saw it, brought him on board to anime at 14 years old. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's super cool, right? And yeah, but that movie is that absolutely was. great. But uh, that being said, definitely go watch that. If you haven't seen it, it's a must watch. And the first one, I love the first one too. But either way, see you guys next week. Subscribe, like, and see you guys next Sunday. Peace.